Round five of Q12, and we're filming today at the Royal Oak in Purley. Purley is in South London, a very affluent suburb near the Epsom and the North Downs. It's wall-to-wall -wall golf courses and properties worth about three million pounds each. It's also a pleasant place for many people to retire. And we have five contestants here today who are going to play a modified version of Q12. We are going to play the Purley and South Circular a reverse player part retention modification rule, which no doubt everybody's read about on the internet. And we're going to play round three first. If you've been watching these films, you probably know the way the rounds are played, but very simply, on the first round, which we're going to get over with in just a moment, <laughs> we're going to play the first player to get 12 points stops the round. Each player has three lives. If a player gets three incorrect answers, they will be out. The players we have with us today are a huge, immense quality field. We've got Mike Abbott, who's been on countless quiz shows, including Q12 before, back for more punishment. We've got Peter Edis making his first or second first appearance on Q12. And uh, he would have been my favourite to win today, I think, had it not been for the late entry of Mr Chris Curtis from Bista, who uh, I have personally seen as the fastest person on the buzzer I've ever had the pleasure to watch. We've got Trevor Montague. Uh, Trevor Montague wrote a book about something, or several books, the A to Z of everything. Formerly <laughs> one of the titans of quizzing. He hasn't competitively quizzed for many years now, but hopefully he'll be making his mark today. And I hate to say that Kathy's claim to fame is knocking me out of mastermind by a long chalk <laughs> on the life of Emperor Nero. Well, the tables have turned now, and I'm the Emperor Nero, and she's the Christian being sent to the lions. <laughs> Round one of this particular Q12 on the reverse modification player retention rule. Uh, one point for a, a correct answer, one life away for an incorrect answer. If a player loses three lives, he is out. Good luck. Brian Bello became... Number two, Peter Edis. Big brother, eight, winner. Very good, one point. <coughs> Next question. Weighing... 19,300 grams per cubic meter, which transition metal, insoluble in nitric acid, at number 79 in the periodic table? Number four, Trevor Montague. Uh, gold. Gold is correct. Fantastic answer, Trevor. Number three. On the 1st of January, 1771, who reported to the reasonable as an ordinary seaman and coxswain and ended his career on the 21st of October, eight... Number three, Chris Curtis. Admiral Lord Nelson. Aye, aye, Captain. Labelled the capital of the North and Cottonopolis with... Number two, Peter Edis. Manchester. Manchester is the correct answer. At just over seven minutes, it was the longest single to make number one in both the UK and United... Number four, Trevor Montague. <clears throat> hey, Jude. Is the correct answer. Very brave interruption. <laughs> Russia's representatives in the 2003 Eurovision Song Contest... Number four, Trevor Montague. Uh, tattoo. Tattoo is a correct answer. Good form. Petula Clark, John Terry, Jimmy Page and Jimmy White all hail from which Surrey town whose race course holds the second leg of the English Triple Crown, the Derby? Number Epsom. four, Trevor Montague. Epsom. Epsom is correct. I think you can leave the camera on Trevor. <laughs> Eighth question. Born 25 years to the day after her husband. Who won the... Two, Catherine Zeta-Jones. Catherine Zeta-Jones, next question. <laughs> Whose coat was taken by Hertfordshire Police from the Big Brother house after a series of... Com Number four, Trevor Montague. Uh, Pete Burns. Pete Burns is awesome. What was 4.02 metres in 1912, 5 metres in 1963, and became 6 metres in 1985, but has remained at 6 metres and 14 since Sergei Bubka's... Number two, Peter the Edis. pole vault world record for the them. The pole vault men. world record is absolutely right. Are you going to break it? I had a feeling it was going to be an athletics one. And I was thinking, <laughs> well, Chris hasn't come in yet. And he this knows a United lot about that. State has the longest official name, although it is invariably referred to without the and Providence plantations. Number four, Trevor Montague. <clears throat> uh, Rhode Island. Rhode Island is absolutely the correct answer. Number 12, I must demand an immediate answer once your name has been announced. How many pieces start a backgammon? Number four, Trevor Montague. 16. One life. Number five, Cathy Gillespie. 24. One life. <laughs> Number two, Peter Edis. 30. 
30 is correct. Oh, well Whew, living life on the edge, you people. <laughs> Kathy and Trevor, bite the dust with one life, two to go. Do not get knocked out at this stage. We'll be going to Will for a score check after the next question, which is, which is the tautological name of at least four streams in England? Probably... Number four, Trevor Montague. Avon? Absolutely correct. What a wonderful answer. Small round of applause before we go to Will for the answers. <laughs> Will? OK, yeah, uh, Trevor is in the lead on seven, Peter is on five, uh, Chris is on one, and Mike and Cathy have yet to score. <laughs> and the people with lives down are Trevor and Cathy. Next question. Good luck, everybody. Whose books are that extra half an inch hair... He Number one, Mike Abbott. Victoria Beckham. It was on Millionaire a few weeks ago, I believe, wasn't it, that question? Victoria Beckham or Victoria Adams is the correct answer. Next question. Meaning, bearer of martyrs in Hebrew. What was the middle name of Jesse Garren's brother and the first name of the sibling of Moses? Aaron. Number two, Peter Edis. Aaron. Aaron is correct. Unlucky. Cathy, welcome mm. to the real world. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Cameron Diaz, Lucy Liu and Drew... Number two, Peter Edith. Charlie's Angels. Charlie's Angels is absolutely the correct answer. Well done. At the 1908 Olympic Games in London, what was extended by... Number three, Chris Curtis. The marathon course. You are a great set of competitors. The marathon is correct. <coughs> His brothers were Robin, who used the same surname. Number three, Chris Curtis. The brothers Gibb. You lose a life. Say Have we got any more press as well? Number five, Cathy Gillespie. I was going to say the same. <laughs> Lose a life and you are living life on the edge here in Purley. Oh, well. Any more, Will? No. His brothers were Robin, who used the same surname, and Eden Kane, who obviously... Oh, Number four, Trevor Montague. I didn't know the answer originally, but I thought I'd wait. Uh, it's Peter Sasser. It is Peter Sasser. Thanks for the commentary. Which four-letter term describes a person whose parents served full-time in the armed forces during the person's childhood, but is often more used in a negative sense to describe a child. Number three, Chris Curtis. Sprog. Sprog is your second life. <clears throat> Number four, Trevor Montague. Waif. Waif is your second life. Oh, tre <laughs> Number two, Peter Edis. Brat. Is one point. Oh, what a risk. Worth, worth Next one. He became only the fourth batsman to score a debut test century at Lord's. His 128 against Pakistan in 2006 was the highest score by a player captaining England for the first time. Name the South African-born... Number two, Peter Edis. Ken Peterson. Lose a life. Mike's the only person with three lives intact. Name the South African-born left-hander. Leave it alone. Peter, do you know the answer now? What, you said yes, Andrew Strauss. How many countries have won football's World Cup on home territory? Number two, Peter Edis. Six. Is the correct answer. Yeah. Little round of applause Six. for a brave press. So I get to the other line. Which TV couple them. adopted the surname Medford? In number, uh, Terry and number, June. Number one, Mike Abbott. Mm. Number one, Mike Abbott. Terry and June, June is the correct answer. And I never even got round to <laughs> where they lived. Created by Charles Hamilton. Number four, Trevor Montague. Uh, I could be out here. Billy Bunter. Billy Bunter is the correct answer. And are you on two lives? <laughs> How dangerous is that? Exactly. You're on nine points altogether. First name sufficient. Who did Nigel Harmon play? Number two, Peter Edis. Dennis. Dennis Rick Rickman is Rickman. the correct yeah. answer. Well done, Peter. Scunthorpe, Liverpool. Number one, Mike Abbott. Kevin Keegan. Your lives remain intact. One point for Mike. Next question. Peter has two to go to cross the line. Kevin Keegan, Paul Gascoigne, and perhaps most famously Henry Cooper, who advised... Number two, Peter Edis. Brute. Brute puts you one away from finishing this particular round. Wham, Snap, Clash and Tapau are the only acts to have had their number ones in the UK and also have their names featured as captions during fights during which classic... Number two, Peter Edis. Um, the Batman. Batman. Batman is fight. the correct answer. Well done. Peter wins that particular round. We're going to go to Will for a roundup of the scores. Today, all the scores carry through to round two and round three. So these points could be critical come, come the day. Will, what's the scores, please? OK, yeah, only losing one life. Peter wins that round with 12 points. Trevor is in second on nine points. Mike has three. 
Chris has two, and Cathy has yet to trouble the scorers <laughs> in terms of points, but is two lives down. Well, we'll see what happens in round two. We'll be back for round two. And into part two of this round five of Q12 at Purley. Today it's more or less the same as usual in that the first four players will go through to the final. Six points for a correct answer early on, down to one point for a correct answer later on. And naturally negative points are appropriate to the value of the question, so you can lose big points here. Because we have five players, the last person will be knocked out, and let's see what happens during round two. First question coming up. Who was born in 1881 and died in 1973. Number two, Peter Edis. Picasso. He's an awesome six points. Well done. <laughs> Little round of applause. Second question. Who am I describing? He married Elizabeth St. Michel in 1655. For five points, he sat as Member of Parliament for Castle Rising in Norfolk and for Harwich. For four points, his patron was his father's cousin, the first Earl of Sandwich. For three points, he was Secretary of the Admiralty. Peeps. Number five, Cathy Gillespie. Samuel Peeps. Samuel Peeps is the correct answer and gets you on the board. Well done, yes. Welcome points? aboard. That was for three points, Secretary of the Admiralty. Your third question. What was occupied by Julius Caesar in 53 BC and named for five points after the Gaulish tribe that used to live in the area? For four points, in 508, it became the capital of Clovis. For three points... It had a population of just over 2 million within the city limits in 2005. For two points, it was extensively redesigned by George Houseman. Number Paris. one, Mike Abbott. Paris. Paris is the correct answer, Mike, for two points. <coughs> Next question. Who was born 27th of November 1942? For five points. In 1961, he joined the 101st Parachute Division but broke his ankle on his 26th jump. For f Number one, Mike Abbott. Jimi Hendrix. He's a good five points. Well, Mike, <laughs> that puts you well in contention. I'll save the rest of that question for later. Next question. About whom is the following? If in doubt, say this name might be considered the golden rule of 15 to 1. Number two, Peter Oscar Eats. Wilde. Oscar Wilde, you know your golden rules of quiz. Awesome. I, wa I watched a lot of 15 to 1. <laughs> <laughs> that one's for you. Bill? Okay, what am I describing, folks? Pongo pygmaeus and Pongo abeli are two subspecies. For five points, being native to Borneo and Sumatra, respectively. For four points, a primate of the hom hominidae. Number three, Chris Curtis. Orangutan. Yeah, you can say it twice, because I said hominidae twice. Four <laughs> points for Chris Curtis. Awesome pressing. Who was born on the 24th of the 10th, 1985? For five points, was a mascot at a Merseyside derby in 1996-97 season. For four points, made his premiership debut. Number one, Mike Abbott. Rooney? Yeah. Is the correct answer. Four points. Who, who felt it was right when he said it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I put my hand up. Well done. <laughs> who was named the most important person in rock by Kerrang! magazine in 2004? For five points was named Handbag.com's Most Amazing Woman of the Year in 2003. For four points, father is Don Arden, the president of Jet Records. Number four, Trevor Montague. It's um, Sharon Osborne. Yes, just in time. Well done. That was for four points. For six points, who was born in 1564? Number five, Cathy Gillespie. Shakespeare. Unlucky, minus six. Number four, Trevor Montague. Ah, oh, is it me now? I've it, got a six left press. Um, ben Johnson. Unlucky, minus six. For five points. Birthplace, although plaqued, is now a small estate agent without any signposting. For four points, in the hometown of Pisa, Italy. For three points, perhaps apocryphally muttered, Epper C. Number three, Galileo. Chris Curtis. Galileo. Galileo. Galileo is correct, Chris. That was for three points. It still moves. <laughs> 1564, it's a big year. 
Next question. Who was born in Croydon, the daughter of dancer Jean Newlove? For five points, had a brother called Hamish and a father named Ewan. I'll Number take two, a risk Peter and Hades. say Kate Moss. Kate Moss is incorrect. Lose five points. <laughs> for four points. Number one, Mike Abbott. Kirsty McCall. Kirsty McCall is a fantastic well answer. Well done. And you get the full five points on that scene. I hadn't looked at the four <laughs> point quiz. Right Three questions to go on this particular round. Very interesting. Who said, justice ought to be fair and who expected literacy in math? For five points, he presided over the transfer of Sammy Sosa from the Texas Rangers to the Chicago Cubs. For four points, he was born on July the 6th, 1946, in New Haven, Connecticut. Number two, Peter Edis. George W. Bush. Yeah. Who else would want literacy in math? <laughs> well done. Four points. Well done, two questions it. to go on this particular round. We'll get Will to give the score when the round's finished. For six points... Who or what was named after and about the son of Findlech Mac Ruadri, Moramar of Moray? For five points, first printed in 1623. For four points, yielded two Star Trek titles, Dagger of the Mind and All Our Yesterdays. For three points, begins on a blasted heath. Number one, Mike Abbott. Macbeth. Macbeth is the correct answer. There's a few presses on the blasted heath, I know. Last question on this particular round, number 12. Which song, when played in the key of C, had the first six notes G, G, A, G, C, B? For five points, the words sung to these six notes are eponymous. For four points... Number five, Cathy Gillespie. National Anthem. Not the National Anthem. <laughs> I'm sorry, minus five... Oh, <laughs> we've got another press, I think. Uh, number four, Trevor Montague. Save the Queen. Not God Save the Queen. <laughs> Crashing and burning. For four points, the tune was written by a woman called Hill and published in 18... Number three, Chris Curtis. Happy birthday to you. G-G-A-G-C-B. Yes. Well done. <laughs> That's it. Mike and Peter doing very well at the end of round two, but unfortunately, Cathy, despite trying manfully <laughs> to salvage some big points, uh, will be exiting from this particular competition. But Cathy, I hope we can see you again sometime if you ever get the chance. It's been a pleasure having you on board here and bye bye. We'll be back in just a few moments for round three of Q12. Round three of Q12. From Purley, we've got four contestants left. Mike Abbott, Peter Edis, Chris Curtis, and Trevor Montague. During this round, each correct answer is worth one point. Each incorrect answer could be a potentially massive lose half your points, depending on how many you've got. If you're on zero, well, you can press away. If you're on 22 or 23, might make pressing a little bit more dodgy. Good luck, all players. Here we go. With 82 kilometres of coastline along Lake Erie, 92 kilometres of shoreline along the Delaware estuary, Quaker, oil, coal, but more usually Keystone, are the nicknames of which of the United States? Number four, Trevor Montague. Uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania's worth one point, gets you underway. <laughs> Who was crowned King of the Scots at Scone on the 1st of January, 1651? Charles II. <laughs> Charles II was presented with what? First grown in England. Ananus comosus is a... Number four, Trevor Montague. Uh, pineapple. Pineapple is correct and puts you on two. The fruitless of the pineapple are arranged in two interlocking spirals, eight spirals in one direction, 13 in the other. These are examples of what kind of number? When? Number three, Fibonacci. Chris Curtis. Chris Fibonacci, the correct answer. Steady on. Number six, I know, I'm getting excited too. What is the fifth instance in the following sequence? Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin. Batman Number Begins. Three, Chris Curtis. Steady on, Chris. Three, Batman Begins. I'm going to start penalising people for Sorry. shouting out answers early. They do it on Mastermind. Don't mention it. To which family of birds does a European robin belong? Number four, Trevor Montague. Thrush? That's exactly what I'd have said. It's wrong. 
On checking up, it's been reclassified into the old world flycatchers or the musky capidae. Hmm. On which Sutherland mountain did Robin Cook die? Number two, Peter Ben Eats. Stack. Ben Stack is the correct answer. Incidents at the Shrine stars of the new curfew, which was shortlisted, and the 1991 Booker Prize for Fiction, The Famished Road, were all written by which Niger? Number two, Peter Edis. Ben Ockrey. A very brave press on huge points. Ben Ockrey, you've got to be very sure, and Peter is. If white and black are colours, what colours appear on the Nigerian flag? Have a go. Number four, Trevor Montague. Uh, green, white, and black. Just green and white, I'm afraid. I did have to qualify that earlier on. Sorry about that. Lose half your points, Trevor. Who wrote, directed, and starred as John Reed in Reds? Number four, Trevor Montague. Uh, Warren Beatty. Warren Beatty is worth one point. Who succeeded John Reed as Home Secretary? Number three, Chris Curtis. <sighs> ah! Clock. Time's up, and it's wrong anyway. Does anybody want to go? It's Jackie Smith. Ah. Which author propagates the, according to Wikipedia, the urban myth that Jackie magazine was named after her, even though this has been... Jackie three, Chris Curtis. Jackie Collins. Not Jackie Collins. Jacqueline Onassis? Uh, it was Trevor, I believe. Number four, uh, Trevor Montague. And it wasn't Jacqueline Onassis. Which author propagates the urban myth that Jackie magazine was named after her, even though this has been denied by those who were involved in the launch? It's Jacqueline Wilson. Which Jacqueline Wilson character is played... Number three, Chris Curtis. Tracy Beaker. How old's your daughter? Eight. <laughs> Tracy it's Beaker is correct. Line, eh? What term was coined by John Abercrombie to describe that widely but spottily scattered archaeological culture of prehistoric Western Europe starting in the late Neolithic running into the early Bronze Age based on their distinctive pottery drinking vessels? Cathy, do you want to give an answer on that? Number four, Trevor Montague. Trevor? Beaker folk. Beaker folk is correct, beaker people. Which two elements typically make up bronze? Number four, Trevor Montague. Uh, copper and tin. Copper and tin is correct. In the UK police force, what rank is immediately above a sergeant? Number three, Chris Curtis. Inspector. <laughs> but two below a superintendent, inspector is correct. You're getting them thrown your way now, Chris, aren't you? Next question. Initially a commissioner, sometimes chief inspector, always on or over the edge, played by Herbert Long. Who was Cluso? Number three, Chris Curtis. Oh. <laughs> My eyebrows are shaking. Who was Clu... Number Next. four, Trevor Montague. Uh, Dreyfus. Inspector Charles LaRousse Dreyfus is correct. Next question. Good luck, everybody. 20th on the list, I believe. Whose letter? Oh. Number one, Mike Abbott. Zola. Awesome answer. Nice round of applause for that. <laughs> <laughs> Between 1996 and 2003, for which club did... Number three, Chris Curtis. Chelsea. You're getting the hang of it. It's correct. Oh. Um, John Franco is able to play for Chelsea. Next one. Don't get excited, Steve. Calm down. Which Scottish group's first three singles were Chelsea Girl, Life in a Day, The Changeling, and had a UK number one with Belfast Child? Number four, Trevor Montague. You too. Not you too. Number two, Peter Simple Eaters. Minds. Oh. Wrong. Only kidding. It's correct. Well done. Another point and you're out in front, Peter. In which two counties is Belfast? Number four, Trevor Montague. It's in Antrim and Tyrone? No. Anybody want to guess? Down and Antrim. I don't know why I've put Armagh here. It's the wrong answer anyway. <laughs> Next one. About what place in Antrim did Dr. Johnson say? Number one, Mike Abbott. Giant's Causeway. How did you know that was going to be Giant's Causeway? Worth well seeing, done. not worth going to see. Well done. Next question. Whose albums included From the Muddy Banks of the Wishka, Bleach, In Utero, and Nevermind? Uh, number three, Chris Curtis. Nirvana. Nirvana is the correct answer. Next Best. question. Lawrence of Arabia, The Bridge on the River Kwai, Dr. Shivago. Uh, number two, Peter Edis. David Lean. David Lean is an awesome answer in the situation. The Life and Times of the Thunderbolt Kid was the 2006 memoir of which author most famous, book, famous for his books, Notes from a Small... 
Number two, Peter Edis. Bill Bryson. Bill Bryson is correct. How long have we got to go, Will, and what's the scores? Uh, we've got just under five minutes to go, and Peter Edis has a lead of four points ahead of Mike Abbott on 24 points. Chris Curtis has a halved his score a few times and is now on 4.88 points, and Trevor has halved his score and got a few points and is now on one point. So Let's see if we can coax either Peter or Mike into an incorrect answer. Good luck, chaps. Five minutes to go. Next question. What is the address, uh, normally the address, of the Chancellor of the... Number one, Mike Abbott. Number 11, Downing Street. Three points away from the lead. Next question. What is the name of Victoria Woods, magician, husband? The number, Great Supremo. Number one, Mike Abbott. Geoffrey Durham. Geoffrey Durham is two behind the leader. What is the county town of Devon? Number four, Trevor Montague. Ex Exeter. Exeter is the correct answer. Next question. In the X-Files, what is Scully's first... Number two, Peter Edis. Dana. Dana is correct. Well done, of course it is. Next question. Good luck, everybody. Which ex-Arsenal manager became manager of Leeds United Football Club in 1996? Number three, Chris Curtis. George Graham. George Graham is correct. I don't know what we did with that for. Phoenix is the capital. Number three, Chris Curtis. Arizona. Arizona is correct. On the 1st of October 2006, what did the hourly minimum wage become for UK work? Number three, Chris Five Curtis. pounds 25. I'm afraid that's lose half your score. Become for UK workers aged 22 and over. Five pounds 35. You've never been on a minimum wage. You've been on a bloody maximum wage. Next one. For which film did Kathy Bates win the 19... That's number three, Chris Curtis. Misery. Misery is correct, worth one point. Oh, Rob. What is the total cost of two hotels plus the title deeds to Old Kent Road and Whitechapel Road in Monopoly? Number four, Trevor Montague. £700. Pounds. Unlucky. Number three, Chris Curtis. £620. Pounds. £620. I'm glad somebody's got that right eventually. Get in. Yeah. Answer of the week. In the Emmerdale spin-off video, The Dingles in Venice, what part was played by actor Ken... Number one, Mike Abbott. Reg... Holdsworth. Reg would have been almost efficient. Holdsworth nails it. Well done. One point. <laughs> Donald Sinclair, the owner of the Glen Eagles Hotel in Torquay, was the inspiration. Number three, Chris Curtis. Uh, 40. Basil 40. Correct Mundo. Next question. At the 1988 hey, hey. Winter Olympics, which Italian won gold medals? Number three, Chris Curtis. Uh, time's up. Tomba. Number two, Peter Edis. Tomba is the correct answer. We're going to go to Will for a score and a stop the That's clock after the next question. Good luck. The 1996 Conservative Party conference was held at which South Coast resort? Number three, Chris Curtis. Brighton. Incorrect. Number one, Mike Abbott. Bournemouth. Yes. yes. Will, how long have we got to go once the clock stopped? And please tell us okay, how much space separates Peter Edith and Mike Abbott in this fantastic round. We've got just over two minutes to go, and it's definitely a two-horse race. Uh, Peter is on 30 points, Mike is on 28, Chris is on 1.61, and Trevor is on one, so they're way out of it. Hope springs eternal. Two minutes for hope to spring. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> Stupid idiot. OK, uh, next question. The groups Shatterproof is Not a Challenge and Fallout Boy take their name from which TV series? The Simpsons, Shatterproof is Not a Challenge is written on the chalkboard, Fallout Boy, the sidekick of Radioactive Man. Next question. What does the spell Accio Firebolt summon? What does the spell Asio Firebolt summon? It summons Harry Potter's broomstick. Next question. Which country left the British Commonwealth in 1949? Number three, Chris Curtis. Pakistan. No, sorry. Number four, Trevor Montague. Ireland. Ireland is the correct answer for one point. <laughs> if he was born on Christmas Day, which star sign was the baby Jesus? Number three, Chris Curtis. Capricorn. Capricorn. I like a woman who likes everything and everybody. Next question. In which year was the six-day war between... Number three, Chris Curtis. 1967. I couldn't even say it, but you could. Well done. One point. George de Mestral submitted a patent in 1951. Number two, Peter Edis. Velcro. Oh, you're awesome answer in the circumstances. Nice round of applause. 31 points. Who was probably the Holy Ghost alluded to in The Father, Son and the Holy Ghost caught the last train to the coast and generally regarded as the subject of Don McLean's hit American Pie? Number three, Chris Curtis. Buddy Holly. 
Buddy did it. Well done. Next question. On which day does January the 1st, 2008 fall? Don't say January the 1st. It's a Tuesday. I can never pronounce this. The Rod Eye or the Rude Eye is the race... Number four, Trevor Montague. Uh -huh. Chester. Chester is correct. Maria Sulivovic with the ballad Molitva in 2007 came the 52nd... Number four, Trevor Montague. She was the Serbian winner of the Eurovision Song Contest. Correct, one point. When Coco Chanel commis commissioned Ernest Beau to make six perfumes, which one was to Chanel? Number three, Chris Curtis. Number five. Number five is the correct answer. And will it make any difference? We have one more question. It could make a difference if Peter Edis wanted to buzz. Peter Edis, would you like to have a go at the next question? No. Well, that's this particular Q12 over with and a fantastic <laughs> winner in Peter right. Edis. Give him a round of applause. Congratulations, to everybody else. Thank you for participating. If anybody out there in cyberspace is watching this and would like to enter Q12, there is enough space for 12 players to participate. Nevertheless, we can have a game with one, believe it or not. It's been an absolutely fantastic round up there with Liverpool in terms of quality of the players who have competed today. I would not like to make this lot or at least go on a quiz machine after they've tried to rob it. Thanks very, very much for watching. Thanks for participating. And brilliant quiz again. And see you for round six in Wales. Bye-bye. A fantastic game. Uh, I've got here the winner, Peter Edis, and on the far side, Mike Abbott. Mike, always a bridesmaid. Yeah, so I'm uh, maybe third time off I'll get this right, Steve. First, first week I was uh, lost for lives early, and this week I overcompensated and I was too cautious and was too far behind. I think, the yeah. second round is the sort of thing to suit me, because I know odd things, yeah. Yeah, I, I actually think today as well, uh, when obviously you, you with Diane on the last round, but uh, it was a high quality field today. Great, great field, splendid to be in the presence of all five people and, uh, and Peter is just so quick, I don't mind being beat by Peter, because <laughs> he's a star. Oh, Speaking about being weak in the presence of beauty, uh, the winner, Peter Edis, you have got your cheque and the place in the final of December the 16th at Oxford. Are you looking forward to participating against all the other retrobates will be there? Rob Hannah, you've not met him, but he's I a good guy. Yeah. Kevin Ashman might make it to the final, but hasn't qualified yet. Uh, kind of both of you, having seen the format to which we're playing and kind of the random nature, nature of how people can be penalised, I wouldn't say it's a done deal for Kevin, getting through if he plays in, uh, against a few good competitors. Got to be favourite, but I mean, could, could, right. could you ever a, see a I big name fall by the wayside? There's such an yeah. interesting dynamic. He leaves it to the last go um, to qualify, and leaves himself only one chance to qualify. He could well, he could well trip over because uh, yeah. yes, the, the dynamic of the thing takes a little bit. Of, I also yeah, think how much, how much your two of the three rounds you're heavily penalised. For being um, good. <laughs> yeah, well, um, Mike, Mike and I on that last round were quite the way ahead, so we were both incredibly tentative on the buzzer because uh, it would have suddenly given one of us the victory if one of us had buzzed in. I was actually very pleased that you were very close together because it would have been a pretty boring match without, but I can see with the more plays you get in, especially towards the final, it's going to be so tight at the top. Uh, Pat Gibson, Darren Martin, Diane Halligan. Good players. Do you fear them? Um, I, I think on this format I have a small chance. I think you've had 180 questions written down, you'd have a chance against all of them. Mm. Uh, anyway, what you really need to concentrate on now is uh, making your way back down to Heathrow for a game of golf with Indeed, yeah. Yoth Truly. Thank you very much. Well and the caravan date. Well done, Peter.